Hey, hope you all are doing well. It has been a few months now since the latest UAP UFO hearing, uh, July 26th, I believe it was, August. So yeah, about six weeks actually. And yeah, I have, I took a lot of notes. I watched that entire hearing and I have want to make a separate video, just kind of highlighting the really key parts that I thought stuck out to me and reading between the lines a little bit. And besides that, though, there are some other things that are happening in terms of how the government is moving forward with the possible UAP UFO disclosure. And so I wanted to touch on a couple of things that are happening and should be expecting some sort of updates in the month of September. And then I want to focus on the actual legislation that is pending being passed by the House um, and the Congress, of course. We have the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, according to some of the sources online, the Senate has already passed this bill and the House will need to pass it. Then it would have to be signed into law by the president. And that is part of the national um, that is part of the National Defense Authorization Act, which gets passed every year. And essentially, it's what uh, essentially authorizes budgets and money for different programs for the De Department of Defense in the government to utilize um, and authorizes that. So this was led by Chuck Schumer and some other Congress members, and it's an amendment and it's a 68, 64 page document all about UAP and UFO. And essentially it is demanding that all of these departments, government agencies or affiliated agencies um, turn over all records, evidence that they have of UAP incidents. So we're gonna look at that and talk a little bit about that. But before we get there, so we had the hearing on July 26th, and there's plenty of videos out there I'm sure you've seen that summarize some of the key points and whatnot. If you've been following this more closely, you realize that nothing new was really established. Um, although there is some, if you read between the lines, there's a couple of things that are significant, and I'll be doing that in my other video to come soon. But one of the things... I think if you take a bird's eye view and look at, okay, where are we going from here? Essentially, okay, that was good for the public to see these three qualified individuals come up here and basically tell us, you know, this is real. <clears throat> it's a real thing. Of course, David Grush is the one that has the bolder claims <clears throat> saying that the government's been retrieving UFOs for 80 years and has even retrieved bodies and has done it sort of illegally outside of oversight of Congress and has kept it <clears throat> secret. And uh, yeah, so essentially there was at least one or two moments during the hearing where the Congress members were interviewing the witnesses and uh, David Grush was asked if he could give specific names, give specific places. Now, of course he can't. And, but again and again, over and over through the whole hearing, he kept saying, I can give you that information in a skiff, uh, which is basically a secured uh, compartmented information facility. That's what it stands for. And, or something like that. I think that's what it is. And essentially it's a room where there is no electronics, there's nothing. Um, it's totally supposed to be totally private and therefore nothing can leak out of this um, unless somebody goes and tells someone else what they heard. And apparently by the legal ramifications and also for his own preserving his own case that's being investigated and I guess for his own safety as well, he's not going to sit there in public and say, oh, it's, you know, Raytheon, it's Lockheed Martin and it's this person who literally was the person that 
told me that this is going on. You know, you're not going to do that in a public hearing. And it's kind of annoying some of these uh, commentators on some of these popular independent alternative media outlets like The Hill uh, or Rising on The Hill, the show and The Hill. You know, they're always like, where's where's the evidence? You're saying that he said, he said, and where's the evidence? It's like, come on. Um, think a little bit more critically. Think a little bit more in context. Grush has provided all that hard evidence to the inspector general. Uh, he gave an 11 and a half hour testimony of specifics. And that's all closed. Is that not what we understand? It's classified. It's not being released to the public for one reason or another. So it's not that he doesn't have the evidence. It's that we don't have the evidence. And furthermore, he's saying in this last hearing to several Congress members, I will tell you exactly that information behind closed doors, which I can do. I can't say that publicly. Okay, case closed. Now, what's interesting about this letter here, which was from August 21st, 2023, so a few weeks ago, and this was done by uh, Tim Burchett, Moskowitz, Anna Paulina Luna, Nancy Mace, Eric Burleson, and Andy Ogles. Now, I will say, the Burchett, Moskowitz, Luna, and Mace, I recall, seemed like they actually really were on top of this. They asked some of the best questions, and they seemed to have the previous knowledge that actually were their five minutes of interviewing the witnesses, they made good use of it. I don't remember Burleson and Ogles really. But anyway, these guys are leading it. I remember especially Moskowitz I was impressed with and Anna Paulina Luna. She is also also did some really smart things during that hearing, getting things on the record. And Nancy Mace also asked some very good specific questions. And I believe it was her that she said, you know, she put Grush on the spot. She was like, when, when can you go behind a skiff in closed setting and tell me exactly who has these and where they are? And he said, I'm willing to do it right after the hearing. I'd be happy to provide that to you right after the hearing. So that's what leads me to this letter. Well, while this is good in a sense that they're doing this and continuing to take action, I don't understand why they didn't just get this information from David Grush right after the hearing, like he said he would. Maybe they were busy, who knows. But anyway, this letter is, they are sending it to Thomas Monaheim, who is the inspector general of the intelligence community, the guy that Grush gave all the evidence to, and the guy that then said, I deem this urgent and credible and permitted him to go forward and blow the whistle and proceed in this highly public legal way under oath. So, man, it'd be nice to talk to this guy. He hasn't been interviewed by anybody in the press as far as I know. He hasn't been called to any of these hearings. He's got all the evidence as far as we know. So, and, and he is in a high level position. I think if this was all he said, she said, and all, you know, a conspiracy theory or something, I, I think that this guy will probably just have avoided this altogether to not destroy his career and his reputation. And, you know, it's, it's even like you've got the head of ARO, AARO, who's basically the official group that's in charge with investigating UFOs and determining what they are and what threats they pose, if any. Kirk, uh, Sean Kirkpatrick, who has consistently just denied that there is any evidence whatsoever, any credible evidence that there is non-human intelligence or extraterrestrial craft. So it's just kind of interesting because if he says that, but then the inspector general of the intelligence community says that the evidence for Grush to go make these wild claims is credible and urgent. What What's missing here? What is Kirkpatrick deeming not credible that the Inspector General Thomas Monheim 
is deemed incredible and urgent. Something's going on here. And at the surface, it appears that Kirkpatrick, it is, if he does, he either doesn't know or, and he's just kind of doing like not a good job, or he knows he's on the side that wants to keep this um, under wraps and he's not willing to, to budge on that. Uh, maybe his life depends on it. What what, what do we know? Uh, we don't really know how far this, this goes. Anyway, uh, in light of not reading this whole thing word for word, this basically says, you need to go read this yourself online, that, you know, Mr. Grush declined to answer several questions in a public setting, stating that the information was classified and would not be conducted and would need to be conducted in a SCIF at the appropriate classification level which he said he would do with right after this hearing, which I guess didn't happen. Um, specifically, Mr. Grush could not provide the names or titles of individuals with firsthand knowledge of or direct access to UAP crash retrieval programs. Similarly, Grush could not provide the names or titles of individuals with firsthand knowledge or direct access to UAP reverse engineering programs. However, Mr. Grush testified that he provided this information to the inspector general's office. So they're doing a good job here. They're following it the way it needs to be. Let's get these first hand witnesses on the stand. Let's get right to it. Okay, the source of it. Um, considering Mr. Grush's testimony was under oath. Yeah. AKA, if he lied that he provided names and titles to you, he's going to go to jail. Um, however, assuming that that is true and he's not prepared to go to jail, Thomas Meinheim, the inspector general has the names and titles of the people who were directly involved in crash retrievals and reverse engineering of UAPs, UFOs. So Mr. Meinheim has that as far as we know, unless Grush is planning to go to jail. Um, and then they ask him. Uh, we request answers to the following questions. Which intelligence community members, positions, facilities, military bases, or other actors are involved with UAP crash retrieval programs directly or indirectly? I mean, this is epic. I mean, uh, hopefully, you know, in uh, 80 years from now, history classes will be reading this as a primary source. And uh, just looking at that, I mean, here we have it. Congress writing the Defense Department to provide the names and military bases of UFO extraterrestrial spacecraft retrieval programs. <laughs> and number two, which intelligence community members, positions, facility, military bases, or other actors are involved with UAP reverse engineering programs, directly or indirectly? Give them props on the wording on this. They cover all their bases, you know, especially the directly or indirectly part. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what Monheim does here. Here's the cool part. Right now it's September 7th. So they're asking, please respond by September 15th. If the info requested above does uh, is classified, we, we request access to this information in a secure setting no later than September 26th, 2023. So this is the whole thing. And this is the thing that the government kind of has in their power is this whole classified versus declassified uh, available to the public for disclosure. I mean, there is a lot of room to decide something needs to remain classified. And that's going to be one of the big themes, I think, of this whole disclosure process. So Monheim in his power to decide if he's going to just publicly respond and give those names, which I would highly doubt. Uh, if it's classified, then again, Congress, these Congress members won't be able to tell us, but in theory, at least they'll be able to continue the investigation. The problem that I see is if they give them the names, the titles, the military bases, the facilities, all that. And this is a thing that nobody in Congress asked in the hearing, which I think is really important. And which is, what are we going to do about the fact that if these entities have been able to keep this secret and control it for all these years, we have to assume they're going to be able to know what's going on with this investigation. And they're going to be able to know 
if Congress or the inspector general or whoever's going to try to crack down on this, they're going to know what they know. And so if they know, okay, they know that there's stuff at, uh, at, you know, Edwards air force base, um, in this location, they, why, what would stop them from just moving it? If they still want it to remain secret, if they really have craft capable of going into outer space, what, what's to stop them from right now, just moving everything off world. And then when Congress goes and investigates or whoever does end up doing that, there's just nothing there. <laughs> um, that's a real problem. So there's going to have to be other documentation and hard evidence to bring this down and to uh, expose this, such as indisputable video camera footage or testimony from enough people who were in inside positions that it must be deemed that this is this is really the case you know, what Grush is claiming. Um, so we'll see how that happens. Uh, sometime this month, we should hear something about about the response from uh, the in Inspector General Monheim. So we'll look there. And then also, a few weeks ago, we had this in the from the Office of the Department of Defense Inspector General, which is an evaluation of the DOD's actions regarding unidentified anomalous phenomena. Um, and what this says is the Department of Defense uh, Inspector General released a classified report on its evaluation of the DOD's actions regarding UAP. At a later date, the DOD Office of Inspector General will release an unclassified overview on how the DOD military services, defense agencies, and military department counterintelligence organizations took intelligence, counterintel, and force protection actions to detect, report, collect, analyze, and identify UAP. UAP. So this is just sort of something on the side, kind of interesting. The DOD is releasing a classified report on how they obtained info essentially on UAPs. And there will be a, a unclassified overview that will be provided for the public to receive. So that's some of the things that are happening right now. And we see that they are trying to take some action. And we'll see that's kind of like the big next kink in the story from what I can see is that Monaheim is going to have to respond to this. And we're going to see how that progresses. We haven't heard any words about any additional hearings um, and no really big information has come to light that really, sh you know, that really pushes this narrative further. Um, however, we will see probably soon this amendment to the uh, National Defense Authorization Act being passed or denied or modified in the coming near future. And uh, it's worth looking at this because this, there's some interesting information here uh, that's going to kind of tell us how disclosure is likely going to roll out, uh, at least in, in to a certain degree. And what I'm going to do actually is we'll, we'll end that here today. Um, so we could just kind of touch on those two things and some of the insights I wanted to share about that, about the letter to the Inspector General from Congress and about this report that will be coming out about how the DOD is going about gathering UAP information. In the next video, I will do a full breakdown on the um, this bill, which is actually called, uh, as it's proposed to be called, is the uh, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Disclosure Act of 2023. So uh, yeah, I hope that that gives you a little bit of insight or food for thought in your own exploration of this topic. And if you're following how things are proceeding, I hope maybe that'll give you something further in, in thinking about this for yourself. And in the next video, we'll dive into this bill 
and uh, I'll kind of share my insights on that. So stay positive. I think that good things are coming, but of course, there's always challenges and struggles along the way, and I'll see you in the next video.